This is Hot Boys Garage, episode 27, where I'm gonna show you how to rebuild a water pump on a Honda TRX 450R engine. This video is gonna be specific to the first generation, 2004, 2005 TRX engine, but it's gonna be very similar on 2006 and up Honda TRX 450R engines, and it's also gonna be pretty similar on Honda CRF 450 dirt bike based engines. So let's jump right into it. Here's what we'll need to complete the job. The largest expense, if you don't already have one, would be a blind bearing puller set. You'll also need a couple of ratchets, some metric hex or Allen drivers, metric sockets, flat and Phillips screwdriver, along with a small flat screwdriver, a rubber mallet, some engine oil. If you're gonna replace your side cover gasket, you'll need a razor blade scraper like this. For draining the coolant, you'll need something to catch the coolant. If you are planning on replacing your coolant, have that ready to go, some shop towels, and for draining your oil, also have an oil catch container ready too. Okay, let's get started. To change out your water pump components, you're gonna have to remove this entire right side outer cover. And in order to do that, you've gotta complete a few things first. Number one, you've got to drain your transmission oil, which the drain bolt is right down here on an 0405 engine. Uh, it's, on, it's a bolt on the other side for the uh, 06 and up engines. And then for 0405 engines, you also should go ahead and drain your engine oil because removing the side cover with the bike sitting flat like this will allow all the engine oil to come out down here at the very bottom of the right side of this engine. Now you can get away with not draining the engine oil on the 0405s if you prop the bike up. It's gotta be propped up pretty high. I like to just go ahead and drain both oils out of it. Uh, 06 engines, this side cover does not capture the engine oil, so you don't need to drain the engine oil for the 06 and up engines. Next, on 0405 engines, you'll have to remove your kicker. It'll be right here. You'll just, uh, there's one bolt that holds it on. You'll break it loose, take the bolt out, and then pull your kicker off, or sometimes you have to pry it off with a, with a screwdriver carefully. 06 and up engines, or uh, remote start 0405 engines, you don't have to worry about it. It's just, there's just a plug there. If you do have a remote start engine, you'll need to remove your starter nuts over here. And this is just for like drag bikes that start off of an external starter. And then next you'll need to get the rear brake pedal out of the way. How I normally do this is I will take this bolt back here that holds the brake pedal to the frame completely out and then just kind of bring this up out of the way and zip tie it up here out of the way. I don't remove it completely, just to save time. All right, next step is draining the coolant. And how you do that is removing this bottom bolt from the water pump cover. And on a stock bike, that bolt has an eight millimeter head. What I like to do is put a few paper towels or shop rags, whatever you've got down here below the water pump area to catch any of the coolant that we miss. And then the easiest way I've found is to just use a few old mason jars to catch the coolant as it comes out. So we'll remove that bolt. And just a note, this bolt does have a little copper washer on it. Don't lose that. So you notice whenever you just remove this bolt, the trickle is gonna be really slow. And if you want it to come out faster, what I like to do is put the mason jar or whatever you've got to catch the coolant up here and remove your radiator cap. And that's gonna let the coolant flow. And it comes out pretty fast. And then as my mason jar gets kind of full, put the cap back on, set this mason jar aside, grab an empty one, pull the cap back off and let it finish draining. All right, once your coolant is finished draining, we'll need to remove a couple of hoses. You'll need to loosen up this clamp here, which runs from the water pump up to the cylinder head. Loosen that clamp up and pull this hose off. Need to loosen this clamp here for the hose that runs from the water pump to the radiator. So loosen this clamp up, pull this hose off. Depending on how old this hose is, sometimes you have to manhandle it and really yank it off there. And if you've still got this little rubber hose down here at the bottom, you can just pull it off. Okay, a little bit of switching. The engine I just showed was my little bike's engine in the frame. It was a good way to show you guys the steps leading up to pulling the water pump cover off, pulling the side cover off, and replacing all the water pump components. But that engine actually doesn't need any water pump work. However, I've got an engine here from a customer on the bench that does need the water pump stuff gone through. So I'm gonna show you the rest of the process on this engine. So what I like to do before this entire side cover comes off, I like to remove this water pump cover first. And that just means removing these three bolts. This one you should already have removed from draining the coolant. Once you've got the three bolts removed, you should just be able to pull this cover off. It's got an O-ring gasket on the backside. 
It's got a couple of dowels. We can set that aside. And the reason I like to go ahead and remove the water pump cover before the side cover comes off is so that we can more easily remove the water pump impeller. So the back side of the shaft that drives this impeller is like this cast steel brittle piece that gets engaged and driven by the counterbalancer. And it's a lot easier to let that counterbalancer hold that key with everything still assembled than it is to have this complete side cover off and try to hold that little key with like a screwdriver or something like that. I've actually had those little steel key pieces break. So they're pretty brittle. So how we're gonna do this easily is the water pump cover off. We're gonna remove the crank check hole cap here with a 10 millimeter Allen key. Then we're gonna take a ratchet with an eight millimeter Allen key, counter hold this crank bolt that we can get to through the crank check hole, take another ratchet with a 10 millimeter socket on it. And while we counter hold the crank bolt with this ratchet, we're gonna go ahead and break this shaft loose. And this is a lot easier to do if you've got a second set of hands. All right, once you've got that broken loose, you don't need to remove it all the way. You can pull this socket off, pull this ratchet and socket out. And then the next step is to pull this complete right side cover off. And for an 0405 engine, there will be 18 eight millimeter bolts that will need to be loosened and removed, including this top clutch cover bolt up here. Something I like to do with all of the bolts that come out of that side cover is I like to lay down a new paper towel, new shop rag, and then arrange the bolts in the position that they came out of the side cover. Because a lot of these are different lengths and rather than try to struggle to find where they go back in, sometimes it's just easier to lay it out like this. That way I know exactly where they go back in. With all the bolts removed, we can pull this right side cover off. If you've got the engine still in the bike and the engine sitting level, there will likely be some extra transmission and or engine oil that didn't get drained out. So I would put some shop rags, paper towels down underneath and then we can go ahead and pull this off. And if your engine's got a kicker, I would recommend holding this kicker shaft in, pressing in as you pull the side cover off. Kind of got to wiggle it a little bit, but it should come right off. Sometimes the gasket will stay on the engine. Sometimes it'll come off with the side cover. Also, if you got a kicker, make sure that this little shim here stays on the bottom kicker gear. And then we can take the side cover over to the bench and work on it. One other thing to note, there are a couple of dowels for this side cover. One right up here. I don't know if you can see that, but it's behind the, the clutch pack here. And one right down here in the 0405 engines. And then also check to make sure that your coolant passage here stays in the case and it should have an O-ring around it. Now with the side cover on the bench, you can go ahead and spin the impeller all the way off. You may need to flip it over and hold the back side of this with your fingers. This is that cast piece I was talking about earlier, where if you didn't break the impeller loose before you disassembled the side cover, you'd have to try and hold this with a screwdriver or something. And again, these things are pretty brittle. And then with the impeller off, you can pull this outer seal off and then push the impeller shaft out the backside. That should fall out and it looks like this. And then we'll flip the side cover over and next we'll need to pull this water pump bearing out of the case. To get the bearing out of the case, we'll use a blind bearing puller. What I'm gonna do is stick this in past the bearing just a little ways and then expand it so that it opens up large enough to grab the back side of the inside of the bearing. And then I'll use a slide hammer to yank the bearing out. Uh, this part is a little awkward. If you've got a second set of hands around to help hold the side cover as you do this, it makes things a lot easier. And there's the bearing extracted. Underneath the bearing, there is an oil seal. We'll need to pull that out next. Easiest way I've found to get it out is to take like a small flathead screwdriver, and just gently pry it out. Just make sure you don't mar up the case while you're trying to get it out. And here's the oil seal that we just pulled out. All right, that's it for the backside. Now we gotta flip it back over and pull the mechanical steel out. Getting this mechanical seal out of the case is probably my least favorite thing to do. It really kind of sucks. A popular way to try and get it out is to use a really small flathead screwdriver and pry up the outer edge of the mechanical seal here. I'm hoping this shows up on camera halfway decent, but this seam right here is the mechanical seal that sits down flat against the case. So this part here is mechanical seal. This part out here is the case. You'll be able to feel the lip there. And sometimes the easiest way to do is to work your screwdriver around and pry that part of the mechanical seal up. Another method is to use a little bit larger blind bearing puller, slip it down inside of the mechanical seal and expand it so that it grabs the backside and use a slide hammer to pull it out. But regardless of what method you use, this guy's gotta come out. Just be careful that you don't mar up the case break the case, it just takes time and patience. Okay, this mechanical seal came out 
out with some persuasion from the blind bearing puller and the slide hammer. When I pulled this out, it did show that this mechanical seal had been replaced before. It's got some marks from underneath where somebody was in here prying and some pretty deep raised marks down in here inside of this recess where it looks like for some reason somebody was trying to pry something down in here. Now those aren't huge deals, but you've got to run your finger around these and if there's anything that's raised up down in here or up here, you've got to knock those down either with a small file or a piece of sandpaper or something. When you put the new mechanical seal back in here, it's got to be able to sit down flush. So any raised edges, make sure you knock those down. So we'll do that and we'll clean up the front side of this, clean it out really good with some brake clean wipe it down we'll do the same with the back side and then we'll get the new parts ready to put back in before you put things back together you should probably determine what should be replaced and what can be reused obviously the mechanical seal if you've removed it I definitely would not reuse that most of the time they are damaged one way or the other when you're trying to get them out of the case so that's always a good one to replace another piece that I always replace is the oil seal that goes behind the mechanical seal they're cheap enough I recommend replacing that each time the water pump impeller and the shaft you can usually reuse those obviously if your impeller's got some broken fins you might want to replace it or for the shaft if a piece of it's broken off you might want to replace it too one place you do want to look at on this shaft is here where it rides inside the bearing you can see this has some marks on it what i like to do is run my fingernail over this to see if i can catch a nail on anything if i can feel a groove with my fingernail usually that tells me that the shaft needs to be replaced uh, this one looks to be cosmetic i can't catch a nail on this so we'll reuse the shaft. I'd also recommend inspecting and feeling the bearing. Check to make sure that the bearing's inner race has a good fit to the shaft and then spin the bearing. If it feels notchy, it should be replaced. If not, you can probably reuse it. Last couple of pieces, the water pump cover. Inspect the O-ring. If it's got any rips or tears, I would recommend replacing that. And then the dowels in the water pump cover, they're nasty, rusty, crusty. Might be a good idea to replace those too. Okay, reassembly time. We've got the water pump area, front and back, all cleaned out, ready to go. First thing to go back in is the mechanical seal. It comes with two pieces, the mechanical seal and then another outer seal. So we're gonna take this outer seal set it aside. First thing we'll do is put this mechanical seal piece into the case. And it's a tight press fit. Sometimes it helps to throw this in the freezer for a couple hours. Um, you can also heat the case up a little bit, either in the oven or with a torch. It's not gonna take too much heat. Man, that's not required. It's just sometimes it helps it go in a little bit easier. So we'll set this down in here and I'm gonna take a socket that will fit all the way around the mechanical seal and sit down on that outer lip. And I'm gonna try and gently tap this mechanical seal in even and level. And if you got a shop press, you could also use that for this. Just try and work it around all the way so it goes down in there nice and even. And yeah, make sure it is seated all the way. That outer metal edge of the mechanical seal should be sitting flat down on the case. This is what I use to drive the mechanical seal in. You just need to find a socket that's large enough to sit flush on the outer metal part of the mechanical seal and is large enough on the inside to where it's not hitting on any of the rubber. There's the new mechanical seal installed and now we can flip it over and we can put our new oil seal in. The oil seal will go in from the back. Its orientation is important. You'll notice you get a new one of these. One side has an open face and then the other side has a flat face. You want the flat face to go towards the outside of the engine. So how we're gonna install this is we're gonna take the flat face, put it face down, and get a little bit of oil to coat the outside of it. I'm gonna get it started with my fingers, push it down in, and you wanna try and work this around so that it goes in kind of even too. You don't want it going in cattywampus. Push it all the way down in. And you wanna make sure that the seal is all the way seated flat down in there. What I usually do is take a, a bearing driver of about the same size. That way the flat part of this is flat and flush against the top of that seal. Push it all the way down in. And that's what the seal looks like installed. Next, the bearing will go back in from the backside as well. I definitely wouldn't recommend trying to heat these cases now that you've got that rubber seal in there. I did throw this bearing in the freezer for a couple hours and usually that will let them go in a little bit easier. Let's get it started and if you got a press you can use a press for this. Usually a couple taps with the mallet. Try and drive it in evenly. Here's another place where I use the bearing driver tools. Place it on there, give it a little tap, make sure it's seated all the way. That bearing should be flush with the case right there. Okay, next our shaft's gonna go back in. I like to put a little coat of oil on it, especially where it rides on the inside of that bearing. Put it in from the back. 
should slip right through. Flip it back over. Next, you'll take the impeller and the mechanical seal comes with another small seal that looks like this. Give it a little coat of oil and then it presses with the white side facing out right inside the impeller like that. Next, there's a small copper washer that will go over the water pump shaft threads. Put that on. This one did not have one of those installed whenever we took it apart, but it should have one, so we got a new one. And then you can take your impeller and thread it back on. Might need to hold the shaft on the back side. And we're just gonna get this hand tight for now until we install this side cover back on the case. Now is when I like to install the side cover. Before you do that, a couple of things. Make sure both dowels are present. There's one down here and there's one up here. Also make sure this little aluminum sleeve for your water passage is here along with an O-ring. If you got a kicker model, make sure this metal washer is present. It didn't stick to the other case whenever you pulled it off. And then make sure your gasket's in good shape. If you need to replace this gasket before you install a new one, make sure both this mating surface and the outside cover mating surface are clean and free of the old gasket. One last thing before we install this, the back side of the water pump shaft indexes in this piece of the balancer right here. So you'll have to get that somewhat aligned before you go to put the side cover back on. Like I have this straight up and down. And then over here, I've got the back side of the water pump shaft straight up and down so that hopefully it aligns whenever I go to put it back on. Okay, we've got the side cover back on. The reason why I leave the water pump cover off while I'm putting the side cover back on is this alignment here. Whenever you're trying to get the back side of that water pump shaft to index in to the balancer, instead of having to pull the cover off and mess with the back side of the shaft to try and get it just right, you can take the impeller and just wiggle it a little bit to make sure it indexes properly. So with our side cover back on, we'll go ahead and replace all of the bolts for the side cover and cinch it down. Once you've got all of the bolts back in your side case and tightened down, we'll need to tighten up the water pump impeller all the way. This does have a torque spec. It is nine foot pounds and we'll torque this down the same way that we took it off. We'll counter hold the engine using the crank bolt and torque this down. After you got your impeller torqued down, the water pump cover will go back on. I like to give this O-ring a nice light Light coat of oil and make sure all your dowels are present then we'll just need to put the bolts back in tighten them up make sure that bottom bolt has your copper washer and last but not least put your crank check hole plug back in and tighten it down okay that's pretty much it for the water pump rebuild you'll just need to reverse the steps that we did in the beginning putting the hoses back on and making sure they're clamped down tight refill your cooling system with coolant if you've got a kicker put your kicker back on put your brake pedal back on and probably most importantly make sure you refill your engine with oil oil transmission if you drain the transmission side and engine oil. That's it for this video. Hopefully it was informative and you learned something. If so, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.